Japan's H-3 rocket didn't explode, didn't veer off course and didn't lose control, yet the mission still failed. That contradiction is exactly why this launch matters. In this video, we'll uncover what went wrong after the rocket reached space, why a single-engine restart changed everything, and what this means for Japan's navigation system and future launches. This story is about precision, timing, and trust. The defining moment of this mission happened far from the launch pad, long after the most dangerous phase of flight had passed. The H-3 rocket lifted off smoothly from Tanegashima Space Center, completed first stage flight, and entered space exactly as planned. For several minutes everything looked routine, that's what makes this failure unusually important. According to Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, the problem occurred during the second ignition of the rocket's upper stage engine. This ignition is not optional. For missions targeting high-altitude orbits, the engine must restart in space to precisely shape the satellite's final trajectory. In this case, the engine began that process but shut down earlier than intended. This detail matters. A premature shutdown is fundamentally different from a total ignition failure. It suggests the system started correctly but could not sustain stable operation. That narrows the investigation to a specific set of possibilities, such as propellant flow behavior, thermal conditions, sensor feedback, or automated safety logic that may have triggered a shutdown. Upper stage restarts are among the most technically demanding parts of any launch. The engine must relight in a vacuum, manage cryogenic fuel that has been drifting in microgravity, and operate within extremely tight margins. Even small deviations can force onboard systems to shut the engine down to protect hardware. JAXA's public communication is also revealing. Officials confirmed the shutdown, but avoided naming a cause, indicating that no obvious fault has yet emerged. When agencies stay cautious like this, it often means the issue lies at the intersection of multiple systems rather than a single failed part. Michibiki 5 was not an experimental payload or a technology test. It was designed to expand Japan's operational navigation infrastructure which is why its loss carries long-term consequences. The satellite was part of Japan's Quasi-Zenith Satellite System, or QZSS. This system works alongside GPS to improve positioning accuracy across Japan and nearby regions. Its unique orbital configuration keeps satellites high over Japan for extended periods, improving signal availability in dense cities, mountainous terrain, and challenging environments where GPS alone can struggle. Before this mission, QZSS consisted of four operational satellites. Japan's roadmap calls for an expansion to 11, a move that would improve redundancy, reliability, and regional coverage. Michibiki 5 was a critical step toward that goal. Losing it doesn't just reduce progress, it actually delays the entire expansion timeline. Navigation satellites are not easily replaced, they take years to build, test, and integrate. Launch schedules must be rearranged, budgets reassessed, and future missions reshuffled. Even though no services immediately shut down, the long-term growth of the system now faces uncertainty. Timing makes this more sensitive, since this launch occurred shortly after Japan retired its H-2A rocket, which had an exceptional reliability record over more than two decades. The H-3 rocket was introduced as its successor, promising lower costs and modernized systems. This mission was meant to reinforce confidence that the transition was complete. Instead, the failure links two issues together, a delayed navigation satellite and renewed questions about launch reliability. That combination matters because infrastructure missions depend on predictability more than novelty. This launch was also a test of confidence in the H-3 rocket itself. After a failed debut in 2023, the H-3 returned to flight and completed five successful launches in a row. That sequence mattered a lot. Each success helped rebuild trust among mission planners, engineers, and future customers. That context makes this failure especially significant. It did not occur during an early development flight but during a routine operational mission carrying critical infrastructure. More importantly it happened in the rocket's upper stage, the part responsible for fine control rather than raw power. Upper stage consistency is one of the hardest benchmarks for any launch system. Even a single premature shutdown forces engineers to question whether margins are sufficient under all conditions. Until those questions are answered, launch schedules tend to slow. JOX's response reflects this reality. The agency immediately established a dedicated investigation team led by its president, Hiroshi Yamakawa, 
and issued a public apology. That response signals transparency and accountability, but it also suggests that upcoming missions may be paused until confidence is restored. For the H-3 program, this moment is pivotal. The rocket was designed not only to replace H-2A, but to compete in a global launch environment where reliability defines reputation. One failure does not end a program, but how quickly and clearly the cause is identified will shape perceptions going forward. The next H-3 launch will carry more than a payload. It will carry expectations that this issue is understood, corrected, and unlikely to repeat. This wasn't a dramatic failure, but it was a meaningful one. The H-3 rocket proved it can reach space, yet fell short where precision matters most. Michibiki 5's loss delays navigation expansion, tests confidence in Japan's new launcher, and reminds us that spaceflight progress isn't linear. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.